Hey, welcome back. A troubling story right now. A manhunt is on. Authorities say he is out there somewhere tonight armed with a rifle, an AK-47, and a vicious hatred for police, according to authorities in northeastern Pennsylvania. They say he ambushed and shot these two state police officers late Friday night, killing Corporal Brian uh, Dixon and wounding Trooper Alex Douglas. The guy's name is Eric Freen. He's 31 years old. This is a picture of him. He's on the run, dangerous, thought by police to be bent on killing again. And that's not all they're saying about him tonight. We have new details from Jason Caro. Pennsylvania State Police are piecing together a profile of a man they're calling a killer, 31-year-old Eric Freen. This fella is extremely dangerous. Pennsylvania no Police Commissioner Frank Noonan describes him as a man with a mean streak who had separatist leanings, a love for guns, and a hatred of law enforcement. His head is shaved very closely on the sides and with long hair on top. It's wider than a mohawk. Uh, he was last seen with no facial hair and was wearing a brown and gold windbreaker, khaki shorts and sneakers, carrying a dark green backpack. They also have determined Freen belongs to a military simulation group known as an airsoft gun team. This particular group reenacted the role of Eastern European soldiers during the Cold War and simulated combat. In his current frame of mind, Freen now appears to have assumed that role in real life. Investigators also say Freen was socially withdrawn and had made angry statements about police to people he knew. That's one of the uh, real focal points of our investigation is why now, why Blooming Grove? We, uh, we really don't know, uh, but we're talking to everybody that uh, we can find that might have any information concerning that. Investigators spent much of the day not only searching for Freen, but also interviewing his neighbors, his friends, and family. Investigators continue to come in and out of the Freen home. Also, right outside here, you can see there's a state patrol car keeping guard as well. The suspect lived here with his parents. The suspect's father telling investigators that two weapons are missing from the house, an AK-47 and a rifle. Investigators found a book in Freen's bedroom titled Sniper Training and Employment. His father, an Army veteran, told police he trained his son to shoot and that he does not miss. These pictures from Freen's high school yearbook from his senior year show him on the school's rifle team. His quote, I feel that we could have done a lot better in matches this year if it wasn't for the fact that in anticipation for the rifle team being canceled. Freen's love of guns and the military continued into adulthood. He is well known for walking around the small community of Canadesis in full military uniforms. He was a very serious young man. He always wore green. I always thought he was in the service. Elaine did not want to give her last name. She runs a gardening store in town and says she has known the family for 10 years. I was devastated and it didn't surprise me, I guess. Why didn't it surprise you? I guess because my children are so outgoing. You know what I mean? My, my, when my kids meet you, hello, how are you? They shake your hand. They, you know, they're very outgoing. This young man was not. And I do think that, you know, but the mother's very sweet. I don't know the father. Um, and when you say he wasn't outgoing, was he withdrawn? Was I think he was very quiet and he did not speak when he came in. Now a town on edge as police continue their manhunt. And Jason Carroll joins us now from, from the search zone. Did this guy have any run-ins with the law that, that have caused a grudge against law enforcement or something? Do we know? Well, he did. Uh, and in fact, it was just about several years ago, he was arrested for possession of stolen property. That happened uh, in New York, in New York State. And investigators uh, are theorizing that perhaps, Anderson, just perhaps, that may have been the beginning of him mistrusting law enforcement. So these are some of the things that they're piecing together as they put together their investigation. But make no mistake about this, the real focus of what's going on out here, out here in these dark woods behind me, is to try and find this man before he hurt somebody else. Yeah, uh, let's hope they do. Uh, Jason, thanks. Digging deeper now into a story. It seems as strange as it is scary with law enforcement analyst and former FBI director, deputy director, I should say, Tom Fuentes. If this guy is acting out of some kind of military simulation role, as police believe he is, certainly would make one think he may be looking to engage in combat or engage with officers searching for him. Yeah, that would be the, the uh, possibility, Anderson, that this was just the beginning. He ambushed those two officers and using the uh, 308 sniper rifle that he used, the hunting rifle, 
He's able to kill police officers or anyone else from hundreds of yards away, firing a large supersonic bullet that the victim actually gets hit with the bullet before the sound even gets there. So he could have shot these two officers before they ever knew what hit him, uh, killing one, wounding the other. So he, that's a very dangerous weapon. The AK-47, obviously, uh, you know, if he's doing Cold War reenactments, the uh, Kalashnikov uh, weapon developed in the Soviet Union during the Cold War was the weapon of choice by the Soviet Union uh, and now world famous as the weapon of choice of terrorists everywhere. So uh, if that gun is either a semi-automatic or maybe he converted it back to being a fully automatic weapon, that's dangerous. So we don't know how much ammunition, how many uh, magazines he has, what capacity he has for a sustained gun battle, but just the fact that he can kill from a long way off makes him very, very dangerous. And, and the police, the state police in Pennsylvania, were speaking directly to this guy during the press com conference. They made it very clear they're coming for him, which it sounds like could be, I mean, exactly what he wants. Could be. It could be that he's lining this up to have the, uh, you know, the Armageddon gun battle with law enforcement that he's looking for. And, you know, the, the FBI had a case in 2010 involving the Hootery militia who wanted to kill a police officer and then ambush hundreds of officers when they attended the police funeral parade. That, that's going to happen tomorrow, so maybe he'll come out of the woodwork shooting. We don't know. Also, when you don't know, I mean, in a case like this, it, you have a heavily wooded area, police have to search everywhere, and then do they have to maintain troopers in that area so that the person, suspect, doesn't potentially move back into an area they've already searched? Right, they absolutely do. And, you know, the big concern here is that he would commit a home invasion to seek shelter and food and water. Like Chris Dor uh, Dorner did. Very uh, much like Dorner. And, and I thought of Dorner immediately when they talked about finding his abandoned vehicle, because that's what Dorner did. And the authorities during that case were speculating that Dorner had fled. He could be a long way off. He may be in Mexico. And in all that time, he was within a few hundred yards of the original mm. where he abandoned. So. He's dangerous, and he could be right under their nose, right there in the woods in Pennsylvania. We'll continue to follow it. Tom Fuentes, appreciate you being on. Just ahead.